Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Kani, Money Mindset Expert. And guess what? Today we finally have the amazing, the beautiful, the gorgeous, and one of my favorite people in the entire world, Bori. Welcome, Bori. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bori, people have just heard how amazing you are. But in your own words, please tell everybody what it is that you do. Well, I am a multi award winning brand and portrait photographer, and I specialize in photographing women and female entrepreneurs and I do my best to showcase their best version and to let their inner beauty shine and make them feel empowered and happy in their own skin and they're doing this through the experience they're going through uh, with me and and obviously with the end results the images I take them Wonderful. And for those of you who are curious, if you've seen any of my images, I, all of my, pre, for the last year or so, they've all pretty much the ones you would have seen on, on any of my platforms, be it LinkedIn or, or um, Facebook or IG, they all are, have been taken by Bori. So it's thanks to Bori that she makes me look so wonderful and fabulous. I'm like, ah, makes me feel so special. Well, thank you so much, Bori. And you are amazing. And you are a multi-award winning. She even got, <laughs> you got an award for my daughter's picture, which is amazing. Yes. <laughs> so you do show people in the most amazing way possible, which is fantastic. And, and so these awards are well deserved. But Bori, you've had a journey that people will not be familiar with. At the moment, they just see this, oh, this, you know, this, this amazing, you know, female entrepreneur who's winning all these awards left, right, center and has all these connections. Talk us through your journey because you have quite a journey. How did you end up here in London and I know for a fact that you're a single mother with two children like myself. And so you've established yourself in a phenomenal way, but it's been quite a journey. So talk us through that. How did everything get started for you? Um, yeah, it definitely has been a journey and it hasn't ended yet. I, no. I, <laughs> I grew up in Hungary. That's an Eastern European country behind the Iron Curtain. I'm quite old. <laughs> and... Um, Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. So that already was a really interesting, I would say, uh, experience. Mm. You know, I'm coming from a completely different culture with with different worldview mm. to what people have to hear. Mm. So I grew up there. I, I didn't have this, uh, you know, idea that, oh, I want to be an award-winning photographer or even just a photographer. Uh, that wasn't really an option even just to think about it um when I was a kid I I was um so I went to many different schools because I didn't know what I really mm-hmm. did I my first degree is I'm a uh, an engineer you wouldn't guess it. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed at all but it makes sense Yes, I am an engineer. And after that, I went to learn politics, foreign politics, because that was the time when Hungary joined the NATO and it was, you know, new Mm -hmm. and okay, let's learn about that. And then after that, I learned about marketing and I was working for quite a long time in a corporate environment to marketing agencies. I was responsible for uh, producing uh, magazines, billboards, Mm -hmm just you know uh, business cards whatever the companies mm-hmm. did and then while I was doing that I opened up my first business that started more like a hobby and that was I guess my first step towards the the uh, art mm-hmm. design uh, area because mm-hmm. I was creating mosaic surfaces Oh, wow. Okay. I started just the top of boxes and I gave it to my friends and then they gave it as a present, you know, with, with just letters, initials of their friends or loved ones names. And, and then I created the top of tables and the frame of mirrors. And my biggest work was, and these were paid works, so mm-hmm. <laughs> really funny. And my biggest work was the a floor of my own flat. Mm-hmm a kitchen and the entrance hall and I did it for more more than two weeks it was a really nice pathway with a Mm -hmm. spiral in the middle but I remember at the end I was crying because I was working on my knees two weeks every day lots of cuts in my fingers but it is beautiful Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's beautiful I'd say and then after that I married Mm -hmm. and or maybe between 
or at the same time I got married and I had two amazing children mm. I have son he's 12 now and my daughter is 11 and uh, I just felt that this corporate world is absolutely not me I mm. I wanted to be my own boss and do whatever I did you know in my own pace and my and my own way let's mm. say and then I opened I had two businesses parallel if I can tell this mm. I had the uh, uh, secondhand children clothes website mm-hmm. like a web shop and mm-hmm. that- okay all my children's stuff <laughs> and I grew that, that I, at the end I even had an employee oh <laughs> yeah and I uh, so it went it went it went really well it was a really big thing in Hungary at that time and I also as I was uh, still working so my corporate job was this this uh, cre- um, producing all these these uh, marketing materials and when I left that company, they kept calling me that, oh, Buri, could you help us? Because we would need this and that uh, uh, done. And then I told them, okay, let's make this official that I'm going to give you quotes through my contact. And then if you like my prices, you do it through me. So I had these two businesses running parallel. Uh, and I have the two tiny yeah, two children. <laughs> All with this, of course, of course, just to make it easy. Yeah, of course. Yes, and then that was the time. Oh no, not at that time. So I still did all these things when I started to learn, just to learn about photography. Hmm. And I received uh, as a birthday present a nice DSLR camera. And you know, I just went to a course just to learn how to turn it on and off. <laughs> Is you know all these insane amount of one buttons and how to use it, and I really, I so honestly, I fell in love with. Mm. I really enjoyed, and I went to the next course and the next course, and then after time, I had to decide what do I want to learn more about and what do I want to take photos of, and and I hundred percent sure knew I wanted to take portraits of people, but I didn't exactly know what. Mm. I knew that I didn't want to photograph children. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, when you are trying to photograph your own children, they never behave, they never mm. function. So that gave me that, oh, I don't want to deal with this every day. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, I was, uh, since then, I photographed lots of children. And when you are not their mom, then they behave. It's like, easier. Yeah. They you, do. You, photograph, you, you, you photograph both my children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but obviously they are they are bigger children, so yeah, what older. I, like, not these toddler running around. But yeah. I did things obviously I wouldn't say no, but yeah, and then it's different. The connection and the relationship is mm. different between me as a photographer and the children and and then and, and, and as photographing them as mom, as a mom. So <clears throat> I I uh, so why I was it that I didn't know exactly what I wanted to photograph and I was searching on the internet and then when I found a video of a photographer she was from New Zealand and it was a short like 30 seconds marketing video where she there was a lady sitting there her hair and makeup was being done and she was talking that she hasn't had her photos taken since she was 18 and she feels beautiful she bought a beautiful dress just for this occasion and then the photographer was taking some photos of her and showed one to the lady from the back of the camera and she was in tears and I, was in tears. I had goosebumps and even just talking about it now I can feel it and whenever I I looked at that video I thought oh my god this this is what I want and mm. I, I made everything to follow this photographer she had her educational platform and I ever since I have been following her we even met in person more than mm. One and uh, once we had I've attended her workshop in Paris since I'm in the UK. So I <laughs> got that. So I I love this what I do, and I'm proudly can say that with my clients this happened like many times. Mm-hmm. That I, I took a photo and I saw it that oh my god, this is amazing. I showed them and they were in tears. Or when they came back, because before this lockdown and everything, I had a big, nice studio. I always uh, uh, invited my clients back. They Mm -hmm. didn't 
overnight, <laughs> telling a secret, that they, when they arrived, they, my, the wall was already covered in printed and framed photos of them. Oh, that's so sweet. And, you know, that's what they saw, and, and, and they were lots of time in happy tears, just saying, mm. is this really how you see me? And, yeah, because you were the first critic. So I guess the reason I loved doing this so much, because I grew up as I never felt good enough, mm. clever enough, Mm. pretty enough and we are I am my worst critic or we are all our worst critic that's 100 sure and and uh, with this experience and and being able to take these beautiful photos of my clients I can help them to accept themselves the way they are obviously with their hair and makeup uh, we I, I do my best to have the best version of them so they don't get up having this hair and makeup on, but still it helps to, to showcase the best part of their, you know, the feature, the face, mm. the, the eyes is the mirror of the soul. So that's where I put the focus. And, uh, and with all these clients that helping them heal, I guess I heal myself as well and have myself also to accept how I look and everything, and how I feel about myself. So, yeah, Wonderful. I love doing it. I mean, I know that um, you are an amazing photographer and, and you know, and uh, you do pamper your clients a lot, talking about first first-hand experience. You make them feel very special and very pretty and so forth. And it helps to, you know, everyone needs that confidence in themselves to look into, to look, not like beautiful someone else, but for themselves to feel beautiful. I think this is important. Yes. Especially if you are coming from an abusive background. And I know that's, that's quite important, um, as in the case with me, because I was led to believe in my, as I mentioned before, my mid-30s that I was fat, ugly, and beyond my sell-by date. <laughs> So it, it, those, those sort of amazing pictures do help to rebuild that confidence in yourself. But I want to talk more about your, your hardships because you've described what you've done, but you, you've completely ignored and sidestepped the, all the mental blocks and all the hardships that I know you've gone through. So when you moved from Hungary to here, you're, you're married, yet you are now on living by yourself as a single mother um, you're a single parent rather and you're looking after two children and your son is autistic as well so he, he demands oh, yeah. a lot of time from you it's not uh, something like I mean children are demanding anyone um, you know that's the way the nature of the being parent is but if you have a child with the extra special needs it takes more time and your energy from you and I know how you've struggled at times with you know giving time to yourself so how did you first of all how did you cope with becoming a single parent and build and choosing to build a business you know what did you already have a, a photography business when you left your husband or what happened yes so I have been a professional photographer for 11 years or mm. before so I started it in Hungary mm. and um, when we moved I guess I had my business running for a year or or so and it got really quickly popular because I was the only person, only photographer in Hungary at that time who offered okay. this service to the everyday women. Mm. And then, so when we moved, uh, well, that was, okay, that was a really tough experience. Mm. I'm the one who wanted to move with political reason and mm. economic, the, everything they were happening in Hungary, we didn't agree with, but you know, as a single family or just a person, you can't really do much about changing it. And and then that was the time when we received the diagnosis for my son, and it was so. It is still it is a huge negative mark on you having an autism diagnosis that follows you in your entire. Mm. Life. It is limited what schools you can go, what you can do, yeah. and the support is not as good as here mm. and then so that was my biggest fear and then the motivation to to move and um and still I was I guess the one who struggled the most at the big yeah. 
when we arrived you know it's a even it's it's europe euro but still a different culture it's and- different i think uk because i've lived in the netherlands as well which is you know europe has different culture to uk itself not just the country it's just that it really is we're part of the continent but we still are away from it and we see ourselves and we say oh we're going to europe <laughs> I mean, we're part of Europe as well so it's even the mindset is different and I know you know I'm going I'm going to I'm going to go into Europe this summer or whatever it's that kind of thinking yeah. so it is a different culture it's a different you know UK people are we are different um, uh, and our culture is very um, distinctly different from the rest of Europe I have to say yeah so I like it takes sorry. adjusting it does take adjusting so how do you I adjust one. go on I'm sorry, I just wanted, that's a funny story. I had one friend who uh, who already lived here mm-hmm. uh, in the UK at that time, and he, he gave me this um, uh, talk that whoever asks how you are, then you have to say, I'm fine, even if you're dying. <laughs> because this is, you know, just part of this, hey, how are you? And um, just a polite, you know, conversation. Say, and because in Hungary, I only ask how are you if we if I'm really interested, mm. and I, <laughs> you know, so but, if they ask, even if you're dying, you must say I'm fine. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you that there's two reasons for that for those listening in the other parts of the world. That explain what that is. One thing it was making polite conversation, we're trying to be nice to everybody, and secondly. We Brits, I mean, you get we we're very conservative. So if when we're dying, we're not telling the world about it. We keep it very, we keep it under wraps. So our emotions, our, our feelings, are generally kept uh, on the low side, and we are very conservative about what we share with people. So even if I'm dying, unless you're my best friend, I'm not telling you I'm dying. I'm gonna say I'm fine. Yes. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so yeah, that's the reason thing. that's the reason for it it's, it's again it's a culture that's the way we are and we are very conservative i think uh, compared to most of the people other parts of europe as well we don't kiss on both sides of the cheek or anything we don't do that and i think we only do that when i go to europe when i'm in, in uk we don't do that can i say that's so funny because in hungary we rather just kiss so we obviously just touch our faces and don't mm-hmm. really yeah kiss yeah. or put your lips on there but for us, the hugging is a much more personal. Mm. And here everybody comes and hug. hug. <laughs> and, and for me, that's that, please don't come into my, don't touch my body. Just let's just give a slight kiss. <laughs> so it's so, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. So how, so when you were separated from your partner, how did you cope with, and I'm, I'm asking this question because I know a lot of females um, are listening to this and they probably are in similar situations if they are in a, in a toxic relationship or an abusive relationship or even just in a relationship which is just unhealthy it doesn't have to be toxic or abusive and they pull away one of the reasons they may not choose to pull away is how do I do this on my own how do I run a successful business and look after two kids and you and the reason I mentioned your son's autism is because he, he, he does require more effort for, from you. My, my, uh, my 14 year old daughter is pretty much self-sufficient now, but unfortunately that's not the case with, with your son, even though he's 12 and coming up to 14, he, he, will, he will still need that extra support from you and your mind. I mean, at the moment I'm take, I, I was putting my son through learn plus, half my energy was spent on okay, his, his lessons and his exams and his papers and his stuff, stuff. but I knew there's an end in sight. It was going to finish. Come th- this end of January, we're done. Whatever happens, happens. You don't have the end in sight. So how do you keep yourself sane? How do you, how did you cope then? And now it's probably easier, but how did you initially cope when you were all of a sudden by yourself in a foreign country with two young children and you're looking to set up a business. I mean, any one of those things on its own is quite daunting, but you had everything thrown at you once. How did you deal with it? Lots of questions and excellent questions. I do my best to answer all of them. So at the, when our marriage, so when it came, became clear for me that this mm-hmm. is not working, it took me much more, I would say nearly two years after that mm-hmm. to actually make the move. Okay. One of my biggest fear was, let's say, two biggest fears were first the children, how I couldn't imagine 
not seeing them for a day when I was thinking and imagining how it would going to you know happen and and how we do these things I felt physically sick mm. not seeing just the option or, or just the possibility sorry of not seeing them for a day or two when they are with that so that that caught, kept me back for quite a long time and and the other other was the financial part because yeah. I my income drastically reduced mm. the, Hungary, the business was running so successfully. I was booked in advance for three months. Mm. Still had the other, the other job as well as a side hustle. And here, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are at whatever you do. If you, nobody knows you, then yeah. they're not going to hire you to do that job. And yeah. had the big had a big block in me. I'm still struggling with it, but hopefully. Mm. Yeah. Over this that that I'm speaking in a different language. Mm. Of course, at that time I didn't speak as well mm. in English as now. I'm sorry for all the mistakes I have already made. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 uh, I was afraid just talking and um and obviously we didn't know anybody apart from that friend. And <clears throat> it was uh, it was really difficult decision and. I'm not going to lie, when we got separated, I had a, a part-time job mm-hmm. as a actress because that was something, you know, I, no matter what, if I was working in the restaurant, that 100% sure I had that money because when you're running your business, you have to find a client and it is yes. something, unless you are booked in at once already, but obviously I wasn't in that state. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I I wanted to make sure that I would be able to I would be able to pay for the rent and 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 uh, whatever bills I have and give food for the two kids because yes we obviously uh, my ex he does uh, oh how do we say it properly so he does pay some the child maintenance child, child, uh, child maintenance but he's uh, Keeping it really limited. Yeah, so he's yes, as as a lot of um, partners, ex partners, do in this stage. I mean, I, I'm I know that for a fact. And um, regardless of how much money they make, they will try to give you as least the least amount possible. I know that with with my case, um, we have a court order in place, and he still doesn't care. And the only way for me to enforce a court order, court order is to take him to court and put him behind bars, which I'm not willing to do because he's the kid's father. So I'm not, because if anything, it's just, it's a very difficult, delicate situation to be in when you are co-parenting or trying to, you know, manage the children. But they they will try to, well, everybody, but some of, sometimes um, they, and is the case been for you and myself, they don't want to pay and they don't want to contribute. So you have to pick up the lion's share of the work, both looking after yeah. the kids and finances and everything else. Yes, and and then as you also mentioned that also my 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 son's problem, but obviously, so when we moved, we received much more support on that part, and I would say that the way the schools are working here, so they are open and they have the all the support in the school that they can be special needs children. So in Hungary, you have to have your kids to go in a special education. Okay. Uh, system where they are, can provide all these extra needs. So here he had it uh, automatically in school, so that, that helped a lot. But obviously they were struggling a lot at the beginning. They didn't speak English at all. My son was five and a half and my daughter three when we arrived. Oh, wow. For them, it was difficult as well. I honestly, I remember the first couple of months, every day I cried. And oh my God, what am I doing here? And and I couldn't even get the support from my family and friends because they know me as I find my way through whatever it is. And they didn't understand what my problem was because from that point of view, oh, you moved to the to the to a Western country where everything is better. What are you complaining about? Yeah. That's common an experience because it, it's not as easy. It's not easy, it's hard, it's oh, lonely. It's yeah. Yes. And so it was. It was difficult. And the first, I would say the first one and a half year was really difficult. I took some courses in English and then 
slowly I started to, to work on my business again. Obviously, first I just opened to the uh, local Hungarian community. But then with slower steps, I did uh, get over my fear and I joined some networking groups. And that's how I get my name out. And I'm still doing this way. But, oh, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry <laughs> how far I wanted to get with this. But yes, so the, the separation. So after that, it was difficult. It was really, really difficult because I was angry. I was angry at him for whatever reason. Mm. And I still had to somehow manage the communication and whatever we met in a way. I didn't want this to affect the children. Mm. And they see him and what they think about him. But obviously I failed numerous times and I said things I'll have to regret it that mm. because that's not their problem, I would say, or, or that's their, he's their lo- uh, dad and he, they love them. He loves them. And to be honest, now, obviously after three and a half years, he became a much better father. Mm. He got separated. He values the time, but he spent because he took us granted also. Mm. And, um, he didn't really put much, much effort on doing anything or having a really good relationship with the kids. And then mm. so now we have a much better relationship. And yeah, he became a much, much better father. And now our relationship is, I can say, friendly. Obviously, mm. we still have our... Yeah, I know that, yeah. But, but yeah, whenever the children has any uh, programs in school, you know, that requires the, the family being there together, we are there together and we even spend the Christmas, the, we celebrate in Hungary, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. So we usually have the Christmas Eve afternoon together as four of us, because that's uh, no matter what you know I I, I understand that but how did you where did he get the strength from here's a question for you where did he get the strength for all of this it sounds and and you're saying you're like just as a matter of fact but I know how difficult it must have been for you being in a foreign country without being fully confident in the language without having your business to the level is at the moment because it's doing phenomenally well now and you've been doing my mastermind so you know you're, you're part of it i know how well you're doing and you've got awards last year and a number of awards this year and so forth but when you first started this venture where you were leaving your um, ex-husband you had two young children one who was autistic you had a business that you're building up and in between all of the time, you were supporting yourself by being a waitress. How did you hold yourself up? Where did you get the courage? And how did you work on your mindset to come to where you are now, where you, you know, you're not working as a waitress anymore, you're just thriving and you have an amazing portfolio, you have amazing set of clients, and you are doing phenomenally well. But where you are now is is a fight, you know, it's it's a it's an amazing place to be. But how did you get here? Or how did you work on your mindset? This is the question. This is a really good question, and you know, it really makes me think about it. But mm-hmm. I had a difficult childhood. I lost my dad when I was 15, and I was in love with him, and I never had a good relationship with my mom. Mm. He, she's still alive bless her thanks god she's 81 we still fight every <laughs> and we talk on the phone even though we are 2000 kilometers far away still and uh, i think that the strength for these uh, came from my childhood so mm. I was 15 from i left my mom's house when i was 18 went to different went to budapest to to learn to study in college first and university. During all this time, I was supporting myself. I was working afternoons, weekends, evenings in bars. Mm. Uh, my mom didn't support me and I just had to eat something, you know. Mm. So I think that was a good base for this. And I just, I didn't even think that that's a possibility that I wouldn't, gets through this so I that, love that 
I think that's what my mindset is. that yeah. Yeah. no matter what, I have to make this work. That's exactly. why I had that. No way out. Very interesting, mm -hmm. interesting, you know, the first, so after the separation, the first, like, say, three, four months, I was all, all the time in the restaurant. When he had the children, mm. I was working, serving people, mm. yeah, all the time, just to make sure that, that, you know, just to see how I can manage all this financially, first of all. And after that, when I, when I realized that, yes, this is working, even though it's at, I mean, you know, we are on a tight budget, but it's still working. I don't have to ask money from him and anything. Then I relaxed a bit and started to, again, thinking about doing more work with my photography. Because mm. uh, obviously when I have a client, I earn much more than my yeah, of course. salary from the pub. Yeah. Or quality. So, yeah, I guess that's, um, it, it wasn't a question there was no question I, and I love that I love that answer I think this is what I was going for that you know the the you sail through life and you get through those toughest this you know the toughest um, times when you know failure is not an option giving up is not an option you just have to plow through you doesn't matter how hard the day how hard the situation you have to keep your eye on the ball and carry on moving forward and this is such an important lesson to remember but because you did, you are where you are now. You're still a single parent, but now you have a thriving business and you're more in control and have a better relationship with your children's father. This is a great place to be, but you had to hold yourself up and plow through and get to this far. This is what I wanted to share. This is why yes. I'm so, and so proud of you. Do you know why I just had a, a, a thought that by the time, so what made me really make that last decision to move out and separate from because I was the one who wanted to separate I felt so miserable mm. I had physical illness symptoms high blood pressure and I got ill cold and whatever illness they had all the time because in my, even my body said that no more I can't handle more tension and I I hated everything what's going on so we, we there was a point when he got home uh, I went to a different room uh, just to, you know, be as far from him as possible. And he's not a bad person, you know, it just, it just didn't work. Yeah. So, you know, when I was working this, the restaurant and trying to figure out things, that was a huge motivation that I can't go back. So mm. that's been an option going back because I'm 100% sure that if I stay in this, the uh, marriage relationship, the way it is just for the sake of the kids, because many people do this. Yeah. We'll end up like my dad. Because mm -hmm. I talked about this. My parents didn't have a good marriage. Mm -hmm. I remember from my childhood when they used to were together or my dad was alive, that they were shouting, the tension was there. And obviously because they weren't happy, they shouted at us as well. I don't, I can say this, Afa, that I don't remember any happy things from my childhood, mm. like 10, 10 and before. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, but the, the negative things were overwhelmingly more. And that's all I remember. Yeah. And, that, and my mom, we had a discussion a couple of years ago before we moved that she thought that she was doing the best for us, mm. the family together, because for both of them, this was the a second marriage, mm. children from the first marriage. And then she said that, that and even now we have, this is one of our biggest arguments why I got separated, that for the kids, they need the family together. And I said, no, <laughs> I have my personal experience in that, that yeah. growing up in a family that they, my parents didn't love them, each other and they weren't happy, that affected us as well. And, and I knew that I don't want the same for my children. Yes, obviously in an ideal world, if it's a happy family, that's the best. But if it, it's not working, the children are not stupid. They realize it, they feel it. And what kind of an loving sample they grew up with. Exactly. So yeah. we, we are together with the, in a family that we don't love each other. Because my son once asked my ex when he saw somebody hugging, mm. a couple hugging on the street. And they asked that, that why are you never hugged? 
uh, with mom or kiss. And then he, had, well, I guess it got him, you know, off guard and said, oh, because others don't do this. But you can't say anything like that <laughs> to a child because, you know, they will remember and then they grow up and, okay, others don't kiss and hug. So they will not show any affection to yeah, you. Yeah, it, it, you're absolutely you know. right. It, absolutely right. And I, 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 you know, my mother left my father and I'm so glad they did because even from the from the small time that I was there I remember those arguments I remember the abuse and I remember you know the the shouting and screaming and and so forth and I was five when she left him so I, I can remember you know the energetic the the memory and the energetic imprint on my life was so severe that I actually recreated it in my own life but I, I do believe also that you don't need to stay together just for the sake of kids. It's actually more healthy for the kids if you live separately apart and the parents are yes. happy too. Well, on that note, Barbara, we're going to wrap up. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We need to have you back for Money Talkies. We will have you back and have a chat with you there. But for the time being, Barbara, tell everybody, how can we connect with you? How can we find more about you on the internet? Um, yes, well, thank you again just for the possibility to be uh, uh, here on the podcast. So I am on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter with my own name. So if you just, you know, search body Boita, that <laughs> I know it's not easy to write it down, even to say it out loud, but that's, that's the easiest way to find me. I also have a website that bodyboita.com. I, yeah, we will give you the link. <laughs> <laughs> yes so all the links that the boy has just mentioned so if you're watching or if you're listening to us on the podcast then in the show notes we will have all the links to um all the social media um uh, that um, that Bori has along with uh, a link to our website and if you're watching this on youtube then down below down below in the description section we will have her links once again do connect with her i can definitely 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 um highly highly recommend um, Bori as a photographer as a branding expert and as if you especially if you're a female entrepreneur she can really bring out the the side of you that you want to show to people and I think this has been quite important for me because I wanted to showcase the fact that I'm yes I'm a lawyer in my as, as from a background but I don't I don't look like a lawyer I don't feel like a lawyer I'm more of a, a general person and the pictures that Bori has taken has showcased that side of me the feminine side of me the motherly side of me the the woman side of me, which are important because these are important to my business. So people know they're not coming to a lawyer, they're coming to a life coach and somebody who's going to be empathetic to them rather than solve a, a solution and, and you know slap on a large bill. <laughs> um, so this is important to you know how what you want to showcase for yourself and boy does that amazing well. So I, I can't recommend her enough. Well thank you so much for being such an amazing guest with the body. We'll have to talk to you on my talk but today thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me and Bori today on Friday Feature. I will be back with another amazing guest asking them how they change their life by changing their mindset. Until the next time we meet, this is Girl Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.